Well, good morning. Saturday, uh, September 19th. Just a short one today. Uh, see, the earthquake in uh, Los Angeles late last night sort of uh, triggered some ideas that maybe we should sort of mention uh, natural and human disasters. Because, you know, I don't think most people aren't really prepared for that because we don't think about that on a regular basis. So in the description uh, and, uh, portion, I have uh, put some links uh, to the uh, Pacific West Coast, especially British Columbia, emergency preparedness and uh, uh, several other sites. And that will give you, if you have an interest, uh, some good information and some good steps to follow. Uh, I think I've got a link in there too for, about volunteers as well. Because Emergency Services is always looking uh, for volunteers and that's a perfect, just a, a real good way to learn about how to sort of look after yourself in a disaster as well. As you're learning how to help others, you're learning how to help yourself sort of thing. So it's, uh, it's volunteer and uh, I did that for a while and it was quite intriguing. And so especially, like you say, in, on Vancouver Island where susceptible to that large uh, quake that we're sort of uh, that is on the horizon that nobody knows when. Uh, I've also put a, a link into uh, a fellow who sort of uh, follows earthquakes and in, in a sense is working on a system of how to predict them because nobody has nailed that yet but uh, he's had some results from his uh, from his endeavors and after this one, uh, he is uh, pointing out at the, uh, the big fault line off of uh, Pacific Northwest, the induction side. Figures there could be a seven, seven or greater on the west coast. So he triangulates things, and his procedure is rather interesting. If you have time to look at his site, it's uh, the one in LA. Uh, he goes into in depth about it. He shows you street maps and that of where it occurred. And uh, incidentally, it's just across, the, just across the way from a pumping state, petroleum pumping station. Apparently they still have oil, producing oil wells in that, that part of L.A. Didn't think they'd have those in the city, but I guess they do. And uh, hard to see because they're covered, they're, they're sort of... Uh, large berms around the whole complex so you uh, it's hard to uh, hard to see it from the road because you're in the area you can uh, and with his Google Maps he sort of walks you through all of that and it's sort of interesting also I have uh, an article a link to city prepping and this is uh, this fellows in the states and uh, you know it's uh, the, down there they have the potential for a lot of, of a lot more violence than they've seen in the last few months with their election sort of looming. And he, but he gives you some good ideas, uh, like uh, some good examples of how much water you should have. See, most places they say you should look after yourself for at least 72 days. But in a major, major, major disaster, I mean, you could be six months without help. And uh, his formula is per person a gallon of water per day. And most people don't think of that because we use water without thinking how much we use. So if you're a family of four, you need uh, four gallons of water a day. And uh, if you're going to be uh, on your own, say, for uh, 30 days, well, you need 120 gallons of water. Uh, for six months you need like 800 gallons of water or approximately so that's things to think about of course there's water purification th th things you can get the uh, tablets or uh, a simple uh, bleach formula that will purify help purify boiled water sort of thing so if you're close to uh, depending where you where you live uh, so hope you find that interesting and uh, you know, you don't want to sit on pins and needles worrying because you can't do, that doesn't do anything. But what you can do is be prepared the best you can. Expect the best and be prepared for the worst, is that old saying. And I think that uh, 
but that, that is true to, uh, today. So to, even if we don't, you don't have a, dis a natural disaster. Uh, they can look at uh, the fires in the states. They fire up pretty quickly. We have that in northern uh, northern Canada as well. They just happen, bang. So be prepared. Uh, what else? Uh, food. U.S. government and uh, some officials are starting to indicate just due to the lockdowns and shutdowns, there just may be a shortage of food on shelves. Uh, so that's a good idea to to maybe sort of uh, starting a, starting a starting a pantry for yourself and your family. Um, you know, some people will call it hoarding, and again, it's expect the best, be prepared for the worst, and it's not hoarding, it's part of your supply that you just use and rotate, use and rotate. And if something went sideways, you would have enough to get by on. And uh, you remember the toilet paper shortages, well that's what they're hinting, they were not that far away, uh, specifically with meats and that sort of thing. So, you no, know, you want to have some nuts and some protein, some protein available, if there were an emergency, because meat's hard to store, you don't have electricity, you have to have, to have tin things. So, uh, just sort of uh, sit down with a pencil and a uh, calculator and put your plan together, if you have a mind to. Um, take care, bye for now, and we'll see you tomorrow.